Silver, and today I'm here to talk to you about internal communication, which is a very common system experience and one that I don't see talked about as often as I think it should be. Internal communication, quite simply, is any form of interaction between a system's alters that is all internally based. So there's no external projection of the communication. It's all within the system, within the body, and is all internally within the mind. And this internal communication can come in a whole bunch of forms. I see it most often talked about as alters directly talking to each other in thoughts and words. But internal communication can also be things such as emotions, pictures, memories, or visualized actions transmitted from one alter to another. For example, if Lorian was trying to communicate something to me internally about cooking, it might show up as a simple sentence in my head, such as, we need to eat dinner before 8pm because the body will be hungry. Or it could come as a visual representation of the body making food and a general impression of around 8 o'clock. It could be an emotion that she really wants the body to be well taken care of and she wants to make sure that I either do that myself or someone else can handle it. I might even just receive a picture of food, a small reminder that we need to eat dinner at some point. But the most basic thing about internal communication when you are directly experiencing it is that these thoughts, words, emotions, pictures, memories, or visualizations don't feel like they're from you. And the most basic way this can be parsed down is that there's no way to predict them. They come up randomly, spontaneously, and just in the same way that you can't really predict when a friend is going to text you or what they're going to text you about, you can't predict when an alter is going to internally communicate with you and what they're going to say or what they're going to send. And sometimes it's not always easy to tell what someone's trying to communicate you. You might have to fill in some blanks or try to guess at what they're trying to say because it's not always clear. Impressions from another alter, whether they're words or something else, feel almost like they're being projected into your train of thought. Like if this is your bubble of train of thought, your train can bounce around all along here, but it generally stays within this bubble. But for some reason when an alter sends you something, it quite literally feels like it's projected from a third party source directly into this bubble, and then you experience it. It's very hard to put into words, but it's definitely very easy to know that it, that thought, impression, whatever, did not originate from you. A really easy way to visualize this is specifically with the type of internal communication that's based on words or phrases or thoughts. If you think about your own thought process, if you think, try to think super, super quietly, like think in a whisper, and then if you try to think in a shout, those things in your head will actually be the same volume, no matter how hard you try to make your own internal voice louder or quieter than what it already is. But if you're getting a thought from another alter, these are things that can, but not always have to, actually be louder or quieter than your own internal train of thought. That typically is a really big tip off that it's not from you and that it's from another alter. And even if it's not louder or quieter, these thoughts from other alters can feel sudden, out of nowhere, out of character, different speech patterns, things you would never ever say yourself, never ever think yourself, that are just being plopped directly into your train of thought. And again, these are all examples of how it can feel like it's not from you. I haven't covered all of them because honestly, some of the ways that it just fundamentally doesn't feel like my thought is just impossible to put into words. Like the English language actually can't encapsulate how I feel when another alter drops their thoughts, pictures, emotions, whatever into my brain. But I hope I did my best. Another basic fundamental of internal communication is that for us, it occurs almost instantaneously. It happens at the exact same speed as winks and facial expressions you might send to your best friends. For example, if a teacher asks a class to break out into groups of three, you might glance at your two best friends really quickly and send like a little, we're gonna be a group together, we're gonna be a group together, right? It's three of us, we're gonna all make a group. And that all goes really fast because you just glance at your friend and you see their face and you instantly know what they're thinking. The same way as if someone says something kind of obnoxious while you're out in a social setting and you and another friend might exchange glances like, who does he think he is? And you do like that facial expression and they do it back and you instantly know same speed for an alter internal communication. It actually goes faster than your train of thought. And if I try to verbalize it in my head and put it all into words, I find myself struggling to catch up to the speed of the internal conversation. And then finally, strengthening internal communication is actually a huge goal in therapy. Not all systems can automatically internally communicate with other alters. In fact, I don't even know if any started out with perfect internal communication. Some systems might only be able to communicate while co-conscious with another alter, and some systems might not have any internal communication at all. Some systems can only communicate in the internal world or headspace. People can even struggle with coming to terms with these third-party thoughts and emotions when alters reach out, 
and can brush them off out of denial. And all these are huge reasons why internal communication is often a foundation to therapy, because breaking down these communication barriers and building up relationships be between alters helps the system function better as a whole and work together more fluidly. At the end of the day, internal communication is super important to systems, no matter where the system is in the process of building up their internal communication. This is how we as alters interact with each other, how we build relationships, how we get to know each other internally. Of course, there's ways to do this externally too, but to fully understand how many systems live and move through this world, understanding internal communication is very important. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.